Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Chelsea have beaten 4-1 by Brighton a couple of days ago. In recent weeks, probably since the Tuchel sacking, I've been feeling further away from home in a footballing sense and I probably have over the last near three years since I've been in Bali. For those of you that don't know, I live in Bali and in this episode today we're going to go through what went wrong with Chelsea, why at the moment I'm frustrated when I watch us. Even though we haven't done badly under Graham Potter and I certainly don't want to be seen to be pushing some kind of negative agenda against the club right now, but I wanted to get Josh and Guy in. As obviously we've got Arsenal at the weekend, Josh and Guy have been on the podcast now I think three times. This is the fourth and those are Arsenal fans. They're both Arsenal fans. So I wanted to delve into it today with people that I've been watching football with because I've been watching football literally by myself for the last couple of years. So Josh and Guy, new friends of mine, great friends of mine, and we go out together, we watch the football, not just Chelsea, Arsenal as well. So it's good to get a different perspective. Before we get into the episode though, I do want to say a big thank you once again to privateinternetaccess.com. I'm going to be making a GBFC Discord for those of you that sign up. So we're going to cut to the ad and jump straight back in to the pod. Enjoy. Yes, guys, so a massive thank you to Private Internet Access for sponsoring this video and partnering with me here on GBFC for 30 days in the lead up to the World Cup. If you don't know what Private Internet Access is, it's a VPN. Everybody should have a VPN to encrypt your internet connection. With the World Cup coming up, I live in Indonesia. I want to be watching with English commentary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the UK so that I can sign into my TV accounts in the UK and listen to English commentary from my favourite commentators. Why? should you go with private internet access for your VPN? Well, through my link in the description, you guys can also see it here on the screen, you're gonna get yourselves three months for free and 82% discount, which makes this cost you $2.11 per month. Go check the link in the description. They're the most transparent VPN provider in the world. See you guys there, thank you very much. I'm nervous because we're about to film two videos that I'm not confident talking about whatsoever because I'm sat here with you two. Wow. Make the most of it. Right. Come and join us, support Arsenal. Then. Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. Today we are going to film twice. Podcast episode, three more points. We're going to talk about Chelsea's battering against Brighton. Didn't do six things we learned. Not been feeling like doing <laughs> anything to do with Chelsea. And I'll be honest, in, in this video today, I'll talk about why. It's not just after a defeat. It's just it's things I'm not really feeling at the moment. We're going to talk about Arsenal convincing dominant 5-0. Guy and Josh here again. I almost did Josh and Guy there. We've been, been out so many times yeah. together. It all gets blurry sometimes. But what do you want to start with? Should we start with Chelsea? I think we've got to start with Chelsea after the shambles at the weekend. Would you say it was a full shambles? Because where were we? We were, we were watching the game. First half was fine. Second half, I gave up on it. And I watched it again. And I actually don't think... This, this is going to come as a shock. I don't think I was, we were as bad as I initially thought. I think defensively, we were awful. And I think that organisation, and I think everybody was about maybe five seconds behind the actual pace of the game, which Brighton, they yeah. play with. Yeah strong, quick attackers, they absolutely rinsed us. But then we had chances, and their keeper did make some blinders. What, what was your take? Brighton come out and looked up for it. They looked really up for it, and so they would be, right? Potter's going back, they want to prove a point, and I thought you started really, really slow. Thiago yeah. made two weldy uh, clearances off yeah. the line for only you to go and concede a minute later anyway. Yeah. So I thought you'd come out really, really slow. I thought Brighton made full advantage of it. Brighton, you've got to admit, you've got to remember, are a decent side as well. Yeah, they're yeah. not. They're not a bottom table, bottom of the table side. They are, in my opinion, a top eight side. Yeah. And they come out. We're up for it. They controlled the game. To, to concede three, four goals the way you did. I mean, a couple of own goals. Just wasn't a good day at the office. Really wasn't a good day at the office. And I think again, it leaves a lot of question marks on where are Chelsea at the moment. I think Thiago Silva was like, for me, that was the epitome of how poorly we defended. Because, I mean, he made five blocks. Like you say, them two in the first, like, what, five minutes of the game? Yeah. They're outstanding clearances. And he's, and he's, he's nearly 40 years of age. Exactly. You're still reliant on... But he's on... still the one giving the ball away to ever make them clearances in the first place. Well, I mean, it's... Just... I think he's knackered, mate. I really, I really do. With the World Cup coming up as well, we've got Zagreb... Tomorrow. He can't play in that. There's they... no way. I wouldn't even take him. No, I'd... no, you shouldn't. Well, I mean, he's Stanford Bridge, in it? But I wouldn't even put him on the bus, mate. 
Leave him at home, home with the fam. Oh, yeah, you are relying on him. With your defence, yeah, I'm not sure what your best defence is. So, I oh, see how you got play? a big grin. I think the thing is, right, as soon as you take Reese James out of this team... Mm. Massive loss. Everything goes to sh at the back completely. Because whoever's playing right wing back, I mean, who was it? Pulisic. Pulisic or Sterling. Wow, that is, too, yeah. for me, th this is why I was so pissed off. Because I think it doesn't matter what... We're, we're looking at in terms of personnel. Yeah, there's no Fafana. Koulibaly wasn't ready to come back. And you don't want to rush him back because no. the moment you take him out for a significant period, again, World Cup, players don't want to be playing yeah. these games, I don't yeah. think, if they're not fully fit. But, like, Azpilicueta has got to be playing in wing back. Surely you can't have two yeah. forward players who could we've seen be used as false nine strikers this season as well. How can you go to Brighton when you've got... Tarek Lamptey, who would walk into this Chelsea team right now, yeah. on the bench for I, Brighton. We're I always going to lose agree. that game. I completely agree. And to go away from home against a tough side and, and play two wing-backs who are pretty much wingers, I think it's just a bit naive. I, I didn't really understand the team selection at all. Sterling left wing-back. I mean, he's not going to be having that, well, is he? It. He's, he's not going to be having that for long. There. You look at Rashford as well now for Man United. He's kicking on. He's probably in the best form he's been in in a couple of seasons. Sterling's going to be looking at this at the minute thinking, bloody hell, like, well, I've got to get out of, well, not the club, but get out of this position. Like, I can't yeah. keep being played well, in. Yeah, he's right? left Man City to go and play yeah. more football. He wants to be the main man. He is playing more football, I guess, but in a position that he's not going to be wanting to play in. So I think Chelsea got to change the formation. But when, obviously, we're going to do a preview for the Arsenal-Chelsea game that's going to come out on Thursday... Well, obviously, I think these boys are going to be arguing why they're going to batter us. And I'm going to try and somehow defend how Chelsea are going to win that game. But I think when it's defence that is the issue, when you play three at the back, you're kind yeah. of forced <clears throat> to play more defence-minded midfielders too in the current system. So I think Potter's got to, without foreshadowing this, this game at the weekend too much, Potter's got to change yeah. something about that back line. Yeah, and, and I have watched a couple of interviews with Potter where he's talked about that, oh, we change the formation frequently during the game. We will, um, you know, we'll start in one formation, we'll change to another and whatever. It's quite a fluid, yeah. fluid way that they're set up. But to put Cucurella as a left centre-back, Azpilicueta on the bench, Sterling left wing-back. I mean, if you're me, an Arsenal fan, looking at that, I'm going, what on earth is going on? It sounds like you as a Chelsea fan are looking at that, going, what on earth is going on? And I think if they, if you try and play like that against us on the weekend, then, yeah, it, it could it could get messy. But it looks like with the wing-backs there, surely they're not playing five at the back, and surely... It's more of a four. It, well, it is to go forward more and probably be more attacking and... Yeah. But then you're playing whatever, Pulisic as a right-back, I guess. He obviously has some sort of plan of what he wants to do, I don't think... I think you're saying that, and you're just... You are you can't wait for this game, can no, you? No, I mean, it's not, it's not <laughs> a case of... You I can't, can't wait. play Pulisic at right-back. I, I, I just don't understand and the logic. win a Premier League game. I don't. I just do not understand the logic. You looked like last week when you played against um, Salzburg. I watched that and I thought, we you know brilliant. what? You played some brilliant football. And then you come to Brighton and you've completely changed everything again and gone in with a different team. And I'm just like, if one, where's the logic? If there's one man that knows Brighton, it's Potter. So but then maybe I think he's looked at their team, knows what they're best at. and Has he overthinked it then slightly? Probably, do you think? Yeah. I think he's overthinked it, but I think you've got to give... Credit to Brighton, and this is this yeah. is why I didn't do a, a match review of the game because I didn't watch the full ninety live, and then I watched the second half back, and I was like, you know what? I think now that I'm not so fuming, because I, I was fuming when I saw that third goal going. This guy, guy, when 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 you're <laughs> out and you're having a drink and you're watching the football, this guy is the worst. He's already said he's going to fight me on Sunday, which is going to be a very interesting. I might vlog. The day. Let me let us know in the comments if you want to see a vlog, so you can see like what we do on a match day. Cause it's eight o'clock kickoff. But what was it? It was a shot for every goal that you conceded. Was it? It was. It was a Sambuca cost shot for fortune. every goal. <laughs> it, did, it did actually cost you a fortune because then they're not cheap. I they're started not cheap. joking about, and then yeah, next thing I have not got any money left. <laughs> <in my wallet. laughs> oh god! But Cucurella was the one that you keep bringing up, and you mentioned it before in the same seat. You don't rate him at all, do you? No, it's just. I feel like everything he does is rushed and every time I see him play, he's just not someone that I'm very keen on. But I say it to Josh a lot as well. And he's like, Man City were after him. He's been bought by Chelsea. He can't be that bad of a footballer. But I thought he I was just, good. 
I, yeah, I've watched my him. my personal opinion, yeah, I don't rate him. And I think if it's Sacco up against him the weekend, I'll be happy with that, definitely. I, 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 I always thought he was a good player, really good little footballer. Um, I thought he probably suits Man City more than he does Chelsea. And Chelsea, I think, in the, the summer had a bit of a crazy couple of weeks where they were just trying to bring in anyone yeah. for for good amount of money. I just I just do not understand him playing left centre back. That is just so far away from what his skill set is. Yeah. And you've got Chilwell on the bench as well. And I just I just like it's I'm just confused. As a, and and I, if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd be really confused as to what on earth is going on and why players are playing in these positions. Yeah, I mean, I think to round it up, we've played 10 games on the pot, won six of them. I think in there, you've got three really good Champions League performances. Two against yeah. Milan were yeah. excellent results. Like, to go to Milan and win 2-0 is comfortable. To beat them 3-0 at home, we were good. The Salzburg one, for me, is above and beyond any performance they've Put in, played some great him. football at times. Really good yeah. football. Like the Abamyang chance where he's one on one yeah. and he hits it straight at the keeper. That would have been the best goal we scored all season, because the football leading up to that was fluid. Players were thinking yeah. a pass or two ahead of the time, and I think that's the problem with Chelsea under Tuchel. And the reason I think maybe I know that there's a lot of people at the moment, Chelsea fans, arguing, saying like we've got to trust the process. You know, there's all these like little buzzwords and buzz phrases that have been. I guess Arteta and Arsenal are the ones but that you, kind you of But you heard that, that all before under Lampard. We did. But I think now, after sacking Tuchel, Manu wins you a Champions League. If they don't do it with Potter, it's never, ever, ever going to happen. Yeah. I said that under Tuchel, but now there's a new owner and that's the first sacking. And they specifically said, we're not going to go around sacking him anymore. Sacking the manager. But I mean, it's not been a bad start, has it? It's not been a bad no. start. Uh, but the reason I'm loss. so negative is because I'm confused. I'm totally confused, game by game, as to what we're going to do. And if that's just... I just sit there on a chair guessing what a manager who's paid to do this every single day is going to put down with 11 names on a team sheet and where they're going to stand when everyone's 11 v 11 at the beginning of the game. I've got no idea, and I think the players right now look confused. Yeah. Which is why we are good in moments that are few and far between. Yeah. But and Arsenal are not. I, I don't everywhere. think it comes from just the defence as well. It's like number nine. Who plays number nine for you? We've yeah. said this before. And Havertz is coming good though. Just in time, maybe. He's got a great goal last week. You, I'd, you... Ra- I'd rather him play. Um, rather a Bumiang play than him, for sure, yeah. We'll come into that but... in the next little mm. recording session. But Arsenal 5-0 against the Forest team. It would have been Boyd to beat Liverpool yeah. the week before. Played well in that as well. Like We're hanging on for dear life, but... The thing I liked about Forest is they they don't seem afraid. Like when you think of teams that come up, you've got your Norwiches, your West Broms, they're kind of happy to just come between the championship, the Premier League. They dominate the championship, go straight down yeah. because they don't really do anything. At least with Forest, you you gotta you know they're actually gonna give something, but you lot just pocketed them everywhere. Yeah, we were good, especially second half. We come yeah. out as we have done every game this season, come out flying, controlled the game. Last 15 of the first half, we were a little bit, you know, we dropped off a little bit. You can tell that Arteta had a bit of a pop at them at half time because we come out first 15 minutes, second half, and just blew them away. And you've got to remember with Forrest, they have a lot of experience in that team. I know they've come up, but they've spent a lot of money on a lot of Premier League players. So, you know, they, they do have some experience in there, but we just blew them away. Partey was sensational. Nelson coming off the bench to replace Saka and scoring two assists in one, I mean, you can't write it. I think, again, we looked good. We really cemented ourselves, I think, as as, a, as as someone who's going to be there till the end. Yeah, for sure. Like, the first half, very good, uh, getting an early goal again. But the same as Southampton last week, we had some chances. And we had a chance to score second and just didn't put the chances away. And then maybe we're thinking at half-time it could happen again. Hmm. Only going in one nil when it could be two three at least. Um, yeah, so maybe yeah, Arteta has gone in and we need to finish this game off and get in the second and third so quickly after half time definitely helped. And then I think after we could just play free flowing football and no pressure on the game, and that's when we're dangerous. Yeah, I yeah. think when the floodgates start to open, you're always going to score. And I think teams kind of know now as well that it's not like you're still giving away chances. 
But if you compare it to the consistency of how often you'd give away multiple in a game, last season compared to now, when you get control of that game, you don't really look back. No, and that's where we've, we've actually struggled a little bit. They were saying that we've won eight games or nine games in a row at home in the league. Massive. But we hadn't kept a clean sheet in the first eight. Yeah. So we have scored a lot of goals at home, but we've leaked a couple of goals. So we've ended up winning 4-2, <laughs> 4-1, 3-1. And we really, we, we gave away a bit of a sloppy chance at the end of the first half, uh, Gabriel. But uh, outside of that, they didn't really create anything. And I think Guy hit the nail on the head. Once we, we were two, three up, that was it. We relaxed, we enjoyed it. And the only negative to come out of the game was that Jesus didn't score. And he looks a little bit like, you know, a striker who, has, who needs a goal. He, look, he looked a bit desperate in front of goal. But I think, again, his all-round play... Fantastic. He's the glue in that team at the yeah. minute, going oh, forward, I think. Yeah, like watching him play and the defensive work that he puts in, it's just like second to none. Yeah, He made three big challenges at the back and, yeah, a lot of work. But I don't mind so much because he's getting in the chances to score in the areas. So yeah. Yeah. when you're it's creating so many chances, they're going to come. So if it's not one game, save them for next week. I don't yeah, mind. It's, it's not a criticism really from me. It's just... You want your striker scoring goals. You want him to be confident. And he yeah. looked a little bit snatchy on a couple of the chances. You can just tell we need the goal. I wouldn't be surprised if Arteta threw him in against Zurich on Thursday just to see, just if, to he can, score. Just yeah. see if he can get that goal. Yeah. But I agree. He's all-round play. Brilliant. The way he just... He's just busy. Keeps defenders occupied. He works hard. He got two assists, potentially three assists, if Nelson would have scored the first chance. I mean... We're looking good, looking really good. Well, I, can't only, I can't fault it. That's the only it. thing, like, when he's doing so much defensive work, when it comes to the final third, maybe he's a little bit leggy. Yeah. And just, yeah. But we're scoring goals. You know, Jack has scored, you know, a few this and season. And he keeps arriving in the box too, like, in places that you've not really seen him before. Like, I yeah. remember watching Xhaka before and you just expect it's going to be a screamer from outside the box, if yeah. anything, because he's had yeah. more of, like, a defensive role. But... Because of the way your wing backs now, I think Tommy Asu's been incredible since he's come in. He really has. Yeah, yeah. Ben White is well. He had a couple of shaky performances, moments in recent games, but he's still looking like even an option for England well. in right back, which we were talking about a couple of weeks ago. But like, he's still playing very well. Yeah. And because they're getting so far up the pitch, you get Xhaka further because these are the guys that are overlapping him. These are the guys that are flooding it where. Forrest are looking, thinking, bloody hell, like, well, if it don't go to Xhaka, it's going to go to Saka. If it don't go to yeah. Saka, then you've got a little Yorkshire Terrier like, Jesus there. The, wing, the wingers chomp. tend to stay wide and the fullbacks come in and play yeah. as DMs. And then you've got Party holding there as well. Party, and perfect well, segue, because he was just... Well, just, I, just I just want to add, like, when you speak about Xhaka, what we do is Martinelli and Saka show for the ball a lot. They show for the ball a lot. Sometimes they spin in behind. But they're actually bringing the fullbacks out. And if you look at our second goal, it's a prime example of this, where the, the right-back is worried about Martinelli. He's pulled up the pitch. Xhaka's then made that run into the space. Partey's found him with the ball. He squared it to Jesus, who squared it to Nelson, and we scored. Yeah. So Xhaka making those forward runs is really causing the trouble for these defences. And he's, it's no surprise he's managed to get four or five already this season. They've been good finishes as well. Yeah, and Partey does a replica of the Tottenham goal, basically. What a goal. Same kind of finish yeah, again. Finish. Like we said, we were going to talk player of the season today. So surely for you... I think a couple of weeks ago you might have said Jesus, but now we've needs a six, goal. We've got six or seven contenders. Uh, yeah, we? I got. Uh, <laughs> Partey, yeah. Partey. Well, I said to you during the Tottenham game, I th Partey must have had about fifty shots from outside the area and hasn't scored. Yeah. And now he's banged in two worldies so far this season. That the angle of when it starts outside the post. I love those finishes where you're not trying to smash it. You're just guiding it with pace. They're set up perfectly the, for oh, him, though. Like just, the layoff, lovely. And such a good finish. But he really is the glue. When he doesn't play, it's such a drop-off to, to whoever replaces him. Our He's been brilliant. Player by Thomas far. Party by a long way. 100%. By far. So would you say he's it your... Just like, it's just not only because of that, it's who we can bring in for him. So if he comes out the team, then we've Lukonga or El Nenia come in. It's not and the same quality, is it? Not the same. I think physical presence as well. Like, obviously, we'll look forward to the to the game in the next video. But I think against Kovacic... He's just so composed on the ball. And he, he's good under pressure. And he looks forward. 
for me, that's the most important thing. As a holding midfielder, it's easy to get the ball go sideways. Maybe Jorginho is guilty at that at times. But Partey, he looks up. If there's a 40-yard pass on, he'll play it. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, he'll make it. He just that, he's just in that transition. Yeah, he's, he's brilliant. Passing between the lines, second to mark. Yeah. yeah. And he just dictates the pace of the game. Slow. Sometimes he does knock it back. If we're like 2-0 up and there's no spaces, then he'll play back. And, but he just dictates the whole game. Yeah. So what would you say also then, if you had to add other names in? Haaland? Yeah. I'd say Almiron. De Bruyne. De Bruyne, yeah. Nine assists already is a joke. And it kind of goes under the radar because Haaland's kind of stolen all of the, the headlines. Really, De Bruyne always... I know everyone always says how good De Bruyne is, but he really is just sensational. And it's just like, you know you're a seriously good player when it's just a given now that you play well every game. Yeah. Like, and I think those, those feeding Haaland balls to like score from two yards, we've said it, I think, before, but he, those, that combination could be, if Haaland's got a ligament problem, as it seems like he does at the minute, they've got Tottenham. Is it Tottenham this weekend? No, they've got... Tottenham got Liverpool. Villa, is it Villa? Man, Villa? Man so City, City win, they've then. got two easy games. They've got Brentford at Yeah, they've home got two home games. And Fulham at home. That's it. For, okay, so City's last two so games before the World Cup. <laughs> so you basically got to win this Fulham weekend. Fulham and Brentford, yeah. Yeah, Fulham and Brentford. You've got to win this weekend to go top of the World Cup. Yes. So who are we saying then so far? Player of the season. I think I Almiron... Think you've got to go Haaland... Haaland just, just the, the I think goals seventeen is, goals is goals just ridiculous. But I think it's yeah. probably fair to do it without Haaland. Yeah, let him have his own trophy and then we can give coconuts to <laughs> someone else. I'm gonna <laughs> go so Almar. Barley, by the way, isn't probably, it? Literally. This have is you so fun. Yeah, it's good. I'd it probably good, say after that De Bruyne. Can you cheers a coconut? We can cheers a coconut. Look at this. It's all friendly now. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say De Bruyne, but maybe let's just do it without Man City. Almiron. Miguel Almiron is a phenomenal footballer and it is all thanks to Jack Grealish. I'm so happy because I put him in my fantasy team at the weekend. My fantasy team is flying, by the way. Doing, I'm actually yeah? killing it. Whereabouts yeah. are you in the, I'm in like the world? I'm like 10,000th. 10, in the world? Yeah. Listen to this yeah. man about his footballing opinions. If there you want to go, go follow Josh and Guy, which you should, link is in the description down below. I don't think you boys are bouncing out of this island anytime soon, are you? No. no. Not, that's, right. that's the plan, not to. Yeah. Operation don't get deported. But anyway, <laughs> going to wrap this one up because we've got more filming to do. And that has absolutely flown by, James. That that's about by. 25 minutes of good footballing conversation. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to GBFC if you are new around here and haven't already done so. We'll see you guys in the Arsenal-Chelsea preview, obviously. You're also going to see a Zagreb preview and a six things we learned, hopefully, from a 6-0 win. <laughs> so that's going to be segued between the Arsenal preview. But anyway, come on, you Blues.